This is a little program in MATLAB that does that uses k-means to find the uh, indices of uh, a set of discrete colors. So just to describe it, here we read in the image, convert to double, which um, means that each uh, color value will be scaled from between 0 to 1. Um, we're going to convert the three-dimensional array of colors, uh, m by n by 3, to a two-dimensional array using MATLAB's reshape function. Um, this calls the k-means function, which is in the MATLAB statistics toolbox, although it's not hard to write your own. It returns the indices of the cluster centers and then the actual cluster centers here. And we have to specify the number of clusters we're interested in finding uh, at k. Um, finally, we reshape the indices back into a, um, an image called I. Um, this displays the image using the color map that we found uh, C here. And then just to visualize that, we plot the pixels in RGB space, only a subset, like every 20th pixels, and then also indicate the set of discrete cluster centers on that plot. So here I'm going to specify uh, 16 clusters, and this is what it's found. So this is the RGB space showing all of the uh, pixels as dots, and the big red dots are the uh, discrete clusters that I found here. This is the original RGB image, and this is the um, image displayed with the only 16 colors. Um, just to see those um, colors in a little better form, as I rotate around, you can see um, where it happened to select those colors. So basically, where there are a lot of points, it puts it uses a um, a color to represent those, as as shown down here. All right, let me move on then to uh, supervised methods. Um, so here we we have a class that we want to um, develop a classifier for, and we'll use a feature, some sort of feature extractor that can extract features from our image in this case and put it into a feature vector. And then our classifier will assign each uh, vector into one of a set of, of designated classes. So we'll look at two types of classifiers, supervised classifiers. One is using a decision tree and a very simple one just using the nearest class mean. If you, if you want a more sophisticated classifier though, I highly recommend looking at support vector machines. Um, these are, are very popular now in machine learning and they're described very well in that book by Bishop. So let's use an example. Here is a, um, some digitized characters, hand-drawn characters that have been thresholded so we just have binary images and we might want to recognize the letter or digit or whatever um, it's being drawn. So first thing we want to do is extract some features from, from each of these images and put them into a feature vector. For example, one feature might be the count of the object parts, or it could be the size, etc. Um, I believe here we're going to be looking at the number of holes in the object, uh, the number of strokes, and perhaps the, uh, the image moments. Um, so here are possible features for recognition. Um, here, area that has been classified roughly into three categories, low, medium, high. Height, uh, width, number of holes, number of strokes, uh, the center, again, discretized roughly, and the, um, the axis, etc. So what we want now is a um, function to look at our feature vector and produce a class number using some probability computation. And we may have several 
uh, discriminative functions of this type. And then we can combine those to come up with our final uh, classification. Um, so a simple example of that is decision trees. So a decision tree is very intuitive. It applies a sequences of tests starting at the root and depending on the outcome of each test um, you go down to a branch of the tree and keep applying other tests. So for example here is a decision tree for that uh, character recognition problem. First we count the number of holes if there are zero holes, we go this way. If it's one, two, we go this way. So uh, let's say there's one hole. Next, we look at the number of strokes. And if there's uh, no strokes, I assume this would be linear strokes, we go um, and, and decide that is the character zero. Otherwise, it's the character A. So one problem is to how you build this tree automatically. Um, what we want to do is we want to choose the test at each node that best splits the tree uh, evenly. So in other words, we want to be most we want to be equally likely to go into any of the branches based on our population of vectors that we think we have. So formally this is the feature that results in the most information gain as measured by the decrease in entropy. So what is entropy? Entropy is defined this way. It's the sum of p log p summed over all of the, um, the classes. So for example if all of the examples belong to the same category in other words, um, one of the p's is 1 and all the other p's are 0, then the total entropy is 0. The other extreme would be if all of the examples are equally mixed. So the probability is equal, it's just 1 over c for each, um, for each uh, feature. So in that case, the total entropy sums to 1. Here's an example, for example, of, um, of two classes, maybe a coin flipping problem, where each p is 0.5. So we're, we're uh, adding up these two values, and we get a 1. So we want to maximize entropy, meaning that we want to split out the, uh, uh, the, the samples among the different um, dimensions equally. So um, here is a decision tree expressed as a uh, program, uh, I guess a pseudocode program. Um, again, testing the number of holes here. Uh, I believe we, we chose the set here where it's equal to one. Then we look at the number of strokes, etc. So decision trees are easy to design and efficient um, and, and very intuitive. I'm um, going to look at the MATLAB program, again in the statistics toolbox, that um, creates decision trees and applies them. And we'll look at this um, built-in sample set called Fisher's Iris Data. This is a set of uh, measurements on flowers, on iris flowers, 150 of them. There are three classes, so there are 50 specimens from each class. So the first 50 in the set are uh, class one, the second 50 class two, third, third 50 is class three. So this particular data set has four measurements for each sample. So each vector is four dimensional. Um, for this demo, I'll just use the first two features um, here. So to plot that um, in a that two dimensional set of vectors, the first uh, dimension is actually called sepal length and the, ex the next one is sepal width. So here are the uh, set of 150 vectors, um, three classes again, and I colored them red, green, blue. So class one is red, kind of clusters naturally here. Uh, class two and three for green and blue are kind of mixed together. Green seems to be more down here and blue seems to be more up here. Okay, so we want to fit a decision tree 
uh, to classify this data based on that training data. So we take our set of vectors x and call MATLAB function treefit and we also provide the labels for each of the vectors in x. So MATLAB returns a structure called tree which um, has all of the nodes in the decision tree that you saw. And uh, we can display that uh, using this function called tree disp. We pass in the tree that we found from treefit and we can optionally uh, give names for the uh, dimensions of the vectors. In this case it's the sepal length and the sepal width. So if I do that I get um, this tree displayed for that example. So this is a decision tree. Um, the root node looks at SL, sepal length, checks to see if it's less than 5.55 or greater. So if it's less than 55 goes and checks sepal width, etc, etc. So along the bottom here um, you get um, classes 1, 2, or 3 for each leaf here.